This is Common Core State Standard Support video for mathematics. This is grade five and it's standard NF.7. And it's actually three standards. It's standard 7A, 7B, and 7C. Standard 7A says interpret division of a unit fraction by a non-zero whole number and compute such quotients. 7B says interpret division of a whole number by a unit fraction and compute such quotients. And then 7C, solve real world problems involving division of unit fractions by non-zero whole numbers and division of whole numbers by unit fractions. Uh, for example, by using visual fraction models and equations to represent the pr problem. Now it made sense to do all three of these at once because there's the only difference between A and B is which is a divisor and which is a dividend. You know, the whole number versus the, the unit fraction. And of course, while we're looking at these two, it makes sense to also look at real world context at the same time so that students get a feel for exactly what each of these would model. Now the typical context for division, and this is for whole numbers, and that's what the kids are used to. Uh, one example would be where you would know the total and the number of groups, and you're looking for the size of the groups, or vice versa, you would know the total and the size of the group, and you're trying to figure out how many groups that would involve. So let's look at 7A first. The most typical and easiest context for this scenario where you have a division of a unit fraction by a non-zero whole number would be if you knew the total and the groups and you're looking for the size of the groups. Now I, groups is in quotation marks because since we're dealing with fractions sometimes we're going to have to take that idea of groups with a grain of salt because it might actually turn out to be something else uh, more than likely better thought of as parts instead of groups. So let's take a scenario where let's say we have one-fourth is the total and we have three groups and we're looking for the size. Now keep in mind that the one-fourth deals with a whole of one. So here's what we start off with. We're dealing with one-fourth which is this here. Now we need to split that up into three parts. So it is just this chunk in green that we subdivide into three groups or three parts. Now, students need to be keenly aware of what constitutes the whole in the fraction. So what we're dealing with here is just this one small piece of that one-fourth. So we're dealing with strictly with this. Well, let's see, we have one shaded block out of, let's see, if we count those, we have a total of 12. So we have one out of 12 for our solution. Now the problem is, where does that 1 12th come from? I mean, we can figure out what happened with the visual, but it's a little bit tougher to see what happens as far as a computation. So how do we get 1 12th out of that? So let's investigate here and see what happens. We start off with 1 fourth and we end up with 1 twelfth. What could have happened here? Well, let's see. We ended up with a 12 in the denominator. And we know that 4 times 3 is 12. So we had to have had a situation where we multiplied by 3 down here. So we had to have multiplied. And on the top, we had to have multiplied by 1. Huh. So somehow, the 1 fourth divided by 3 got converted to multiplication by 1 third instead of 3 over 1, which is the reciprocal. So if you have students do this repeatedly with other types of context with the visuals to go with it to help them out, they'll see the pattern that, well, hey, I, what I'm ending up doing it is, is changing this division problem to multiplying by the reciprocal. Now some real life context for this 
particular model would involve having to evenly distribute some quantity that's a unit fraction and the solution would be the size of each part or share. So the solutions can be obtained in context using visuals and counting, then expand that to a pattern activity where students would see that the result can be uh, gotten by multiplication of the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. In these contexts, the numerator will be a result of 1 times 1, and then the multiplication of the two numbers occurs in the denominator. So for example, like what we did with the 1 4 divided by 3, that ended up as 1 4 times the reciprocal of 3, which of course is 1 3rd. So let's look at uh, 7C, where we look at some real life context. So one possible scenario, scenario would be where, okay, we have an inheritance and one-fifth of that inheritance is going to be split evenly among four children. So what, what is each one's share? Well, let's see, we have uh, our visual where we have the whole inheritance, but it's split up into five parts, but then that one-fifth is going to be what we actually uh, are going to split up. So then we split that up into four parts, but we have to consider that one little green part with respect to the whole inheritance. So if we count all of these up, and if we were to do, do some splitting up of all the, the rest of these, uh, we would end up with one piece out of 20. And again, if we uh, do this, where well, we had one-fifth, and we ended up divide by four, that ended up being one-fifth times one-fourth. So each of the children is going to get one-twentieth of the whole inheritance. Let's look at the second scenario. You have three friends, they're on a trip, and they're sharing their driving equally. If they travel one-third of the distance, what part of the total trip has each one driven so far? So again, very similar to what we did with the first example. So our visual represents the whole trip split up into three parts, but then that one-third of the way that they're driven so far, we split that up into three equal parts. Uh, so if we're dealing with just one of those pieces, uh, again, we have to uh, realize that that little piece is, is with respect to the whole uh, trip. And again, if we subdivide the other two pieces, we're going to have a total of nine. So each of the friends would have driven one-ninth of the total trip at, the, at this point. And again, the computation uh, would be done just like we did with the first example. Now let's look at uh, standard 7B where it's division of a whole number by a unit fraction. For that type of model, the easiest context in all likelihood is when you know the total and the constant size and you're looking for the number of groups. So let's say, okay, we have a total of three and the size of the groups is one-fourth uh, and we're looking for the number of groups. So Symbolically, that would be 3 divided by 1 fourth. So we draw three circles to rep represent our total of 3. Now, each one of those circles has to be divided into four parts. So now, again, we have to take number of groups with a grain of salt. Uh, what is really happening here, uh, the question being asked really is how many of these do I have in all of this? So uh, just using a little bit of common sense, the students could probably just look this as well. There's 12 of them. Okay, so again, students need to be aware of what the whole is, but now basically what happens is we're dealing with all of this. Now students have to be keenly aware of what the whole is. But this is a little bit different situation because, again, this is what's happening. There, uh, basically, how many of these are there in all of this, which, of course, is 
you know, the solution is 12. Now, just like before, uh, in a real life context, uh, here the solution can be obtained by counting, but then you expand that to a pattern activity where the students see the result is obtained by multiplication of the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. Now, since the divisor is a unit fraction, you'll actually end up multiplying by a whole number uh, because, for example, here, my divisor is one fourth, the reciprocal is gonna be the whole number of four, so we end up with 12. Now, real life context for this model would involve having to partition several holes evenly, and then the solution would be the total number of those groups, or better yet, parts. So now let's take standard 7C, which deals with solving real problems, contextual problems, and apply it to 7B, which deals with division of a whole number by unit fraction. So in this first problem, an investor has a five acre parcel of land that will be subdivided into lots that are one quarter acre each. How many of these quarter acre lots will there be? So we have our visual and these marks here uh, indicate that our five acre parcel has been split up into the five individual acres. But each one of these full acres is going to then be subdivided into quarter acre plots, which means I have to have four equal parts for each acre. So we can tell already that this part here is going to be four of those quarter acre plots. So students can already tell, well, if I've got four here, I'm going to have four here and four here and four here and four there. So I have uh, four quarter acre parcels in each one of these acres, and I've got five acres, so students intuitively can figure out that there's going to be 20 of these quarter acre lots. So looking at the computation, students had already seen the pattern that what's going to end up happening here is that we have the five, and we're going to end up multiplying the five times the reciprocal of the one-fourth, which is of course is just four, which corresponds to the idea that we're going to have 20 of these plots. So my solution in this case is going to be 20. And again, the 20 deals with having 20 of those quarter acre plots. Next problem. Shirley baked three pies and wants to share them with friends. If she wants to give each friend half of a pie, how many friends would get a share of the three pies? Well, here we have our three pies and we've cut each one of these in half. And it's a pretty easy solution to just see, well, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got six of these half pies. So surely we'll be able to share the pies with six friends. And again, just like uh, with the example here, they've already seen the pattern that they're going to take the three and multiply it times the reciprocal of two over one, which would be simply three times two, to give us our solution of six of these half pies. One more example here. Well, let's see, let's say you had $3. The question is, how many quarters would that be? Well, here's $1 here, and then we have uh, another dollar here and another dollar here. And so, well, here's four quarters, four quarters, four quarters. So that's a total of 12 quarters. Uh, and again, same type of scenario, uh, we can figure out in our heads that this is 12, but of course you want the kids to do the actual computation where they change this to multiplying by the reciprocal and then uh, they will get you know, this, their solution. And then of course you want to always make sure that the students uh, you know, use logic and reason it out to make sure that the uh, solution makes sense. So here uh, we have a solution of 12 and yes that makes sense where I've got 12 quarters in three dollars and again notice that the quarters was the size of the set and the 12 is actually the you know the size of the groups which in this case are actually the quarters let's go back to standard 7a uh, a little bit of a warning here uh, let's look at the other scenario the other context where students would know the total and the constant size, uh, the equal size of each part, and the number of groups or the number of parts. 
So let's say, okay, we have uh, the same numbers that we used before, but in a slightly different context. So we have a total of one-fourth, but the size is three. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm already starting to get a little bit confused because, wait a minute, I've got a total of one-fourth, yet the size of the parts is, is three. So that can get very confusing. Uh, now, this one-fourth refers to just one circle, so this is what we're dealing with. And then when I, ex when I expand this to the other circles, uh, again, I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit confused because I've got a total of one-fourth, uh, and I've got one-twelfth here because now I'm looking at all of this as a whole. Uh, so this is how many of these I have, you know, out of this is one-twelfth. And again, very confusing. Uh, so again, the warning here is don't try to force fit a context into a model. Again, just go with what's natural and what fits best for that particular context. So again, this particular uh, situation here does not fit well into a situation where you have a unit fraction uh, divided by a non-zero whole number. Now let's look at 7b and let's look at the other context where you would know the total and the number of groups and you're looking for the size. Okay, I have a total, in this example, I have a total of three and the number of groups is one-fourth. Okay, now wait a minute, okay, I've got three. All right, I've got three items. Uh, but the number of groups is one-fourth. Uh, so I've got one-fourth of a group. Oh, so then this is just one-fourth of what I need. So then basically, this is what happens. Okay, it, it makes a little bit more sense in that other scenario where, okay, uh, but again, it, it, it's, it's a, oof, I don't know about you, but again, it's a little bit tough to visualize, you know, the size. Uh, so here's a better way of thinking. I mean, this scenario will, will fit, but you're going to have to adjust how you think of your, your knowns and your unknowns. Here's a better way to think of this kind of scenario where this is actually a partial total and this is actually the fractional part and you're looking for the actual total. Now it makes sense. Okay, I, I've got three, which is my partial total, but that's only one-fourth of the whole thing. So now that makes a lot more sense that uh, I will need a total of 12 to be the actual total. So again, that's a, that's a better way of thinking of this. Uh, so there are some uh, contextual problems that, that will fit this. And here's an example, or a couple of examples. Let's look at the first one. Okay, you've got a hiker that goes uphill from marker A to marker B, and downhill from B to A, of course. Now, the hiker takes 15 minutes from B to A. So that takes 15 minutes, and that's only half the time it takes to go uphill, which makes sense. Uh, so how long does it take to go from A to B? Just using common sense, the students can see that well, it's going to take 30 minutes uh, because uh, you know, going downhill is only half the time of going uphill. Uh, but of course, when you set up the problem, you're not starting off with a 15 and a 2. You're starting off with 15 and 1 half. So again, uh, it's a matter of getting students used to you know, how to set these up. But again, uh, this type of context lends itself to the thinking where they can you know, pretty much go you know, straight to what the process is going to involve. Uh, but it will make a lot of sense to them because, again, the conversion makes a lot of sense based on the context. Let's look at the second example. Julian has $10, but that's only one-third of what he needs to buy a new game. So how much does he need to buy the game? Again, students might uh, want to jump the gun. They can already reason that, well, if $10 is only one-third of what he needs, he needs three times as much, so he's going to need $30. But again, it's important that they set it up uh, the way it's supposed to be because you're only dealing with 10 and one-third. Uh, but again, students can uh, very easily see from the context that, okay, I have $10. Uh, I, I, they, could, they already pretty much have figured out that the answer is $30. So what happens here is that, uh, that again, he needs three times as much. So again, the idea of multiplying by the reciprocal here reciprocal here is, uh, 
you know, pretty easy thinking and they can, they can make the connection. So again, working problems in context like this really helps students to understand uh, the rationale as to what really happens, you know, why it is that, in this case, that you end up multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor. Hopefully, uh, these explanations for this standard will help because, again, fractions, uh, that's a very difficult topic for students, and at this point, uh, they're just starting to get some experience with the operations, and when it comes to fractions, multiplying and dividing are the, the two toughest operations uh, with these numbers. Uh, so again, uh, make sure that you include uh, context to where students can see, you know, why the computation happens as it does. 